Hey everybody, my name is Brad Tennant and this is your quick start guide to the Teenage Engineering OP1. It's another tutorial time with Brad! And now, here's Brad! That's me! So I've owned my OP1 for about three years now and over that time I've grown to absolutely love it. But when I first got it, it was a pretty mysterious little gray box. I came from a background with Logic Pro X, and I was pretty reliant on all the things that the DAW offered. So getting this gray box with these four colorful knobs and this weird layout, I didn't really have any idea what was going on. But over time, it took a lot of practice. I grew to love it, and now I can't imagine making music without it. I even made an album with it, which you can buy at bradtenant.bandcamp.com. And this Friday, Bandcamp is waiving their fees, so if you want to support me that is probably the best way to do that for now bandcamp.com slash brad tenant if you want to support me anyway like i said i've owned this for about three years and over that time i found several different little communities to pop into online and make new friends and see what people are doing with their op1 and a lot of these communities one thing that i'm seeing is people make posts about how excited they are to get their op1 and a few weeks later that same person makes a post saying that their op1 is for sale that they didn't like it and it wasn't what they hoped it would be so i thought i would try my best to explain as fast as i can how you can get started making music on the OP1 in the easiest way possible. We're gonna go over the basics of navigating and creating a track. So let's go ahead and dive in here. This little comment button is your tour guide, basically. Anytime you're lost, hit this button and it's gonna tell you where you are. Right now, we are in the tape. Right next to it is the metronome. Inside of here, you can use your blue knob to change the BPMs you'd like to be at. For now, I've chosen 92 for no reason at all. This red knob controls your speed, and if you want to get advanced with your OP1 and start connecting it to other gear, which I will be doing a tutorial on, and I've talked about before, uh, this is going to help you synchronize with other gear. The white knob I never mess with, it controls your tape speed, and I would rather just my tape speed and my BPM be linked, otherwise it's gonna get confusing. Besides that, we've got our synth engine. If you hold shift and the one button, it's gonna give you a menu of all of the possible engines. Here I've got my own sample pack that I've created, or not sample pack, it's an OP1 synth pack, I guess I would call it. And inside here, if you use your blue knob, you can scroll through all of the different synth engines. Uh, there's a lot of different sounds in here and inside of all of them you can customize them as much as you want and beyond that You've got your drum button if you hit this little uh, Drum button and inside the screen you're starting to see waveforms of each of the drum samples But again if you hit shift and the one over here It takes you to a list of all of your drum presets. You've got D box and drum are the ones that come loaded on the OP1 and these are a couple of different drum packs I've loaded from downloading online and these are the snapshots that I've saved from modifying drum packs. So after the drum button, you've got your tape. This is the DAW part of the OP1. So this is the part that you're gonna see most often. And this is where the, the recording happens. And after that, you've got your mixer button, and this allows you to mix each of the four tracks that the OP1 has. Now, if you go on one, two, three, four, once you activate this mixer page, you've got, well, I guess one doesn't do a whole lot because that is what your default mix is, two, is your EQ if you want to change that. I usually keep it pretty flat because I'm going to probably EQ it more in post. And here you've got a master effects. I usually leave this off for the most part. And number four is where you control your drive. And this is kind of like the compressor for the OP1. Generally, I keep the drive pretty high, but I know some people keep it low. It's going to be personal preference. Mess with this and find what you think sounds best. That is the main things that you need to know about navigating the OP1. So let's go ahead and create a drum track and uh, start building this track out. We're gonna go to our drum engine and we're gonna choose a drum kit. Let's just go to something basic. I've always been a fan of the Awa Beef kit. So let's go with that. Now we're gonna go into our tape and this is something you've gotta be familiar with. The easiest way to keep track of what you're recording is to create in and out points. In and out points are something that you don't have to really worry about with a dog, but on the OP1, you've gotta set points. So to do that, you need to hit shift and one. So right now we're already set up with an eight bar loop. If you hold your shift button and hit your arrow keys, you can jump around the uh, tape. Hit shift 
and that jumps to each of these white notches here. So if you want eight, you start with your first one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, if I didn't have that already set up, it would look like this. And I could just as easily go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hit my end point, and it already is set my out point because that's where it was before. But if it wasn't, I would hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and do it again. One other thing you can do on the tape is hit shift and stop. And now we can divide the track up into little finer increments. This will be handy when you need to edit later on, if you do need to edit. If you hit shift stop a few more times, you can do finer increments until you go back to just the normal default. So that is how you control the tape. So let's record some drums onto it. We're at 92 BPM as we discussed before, but we need a metronome so we can play to, to that 92 BPM. So we're gonna turn this red knob up, go back to our tape, and if you hit play, we've got a metronome. Okay, let's go ahead and just record something like that. Okay, so I stopped halfway through here, and what we're gonna do, is rather than play the same thing four times, we're just gonna go ahead and lift it and paste it by hitting this little orange up arrow. Hit that, and it's gonna erase it. Hit the down arrow right away before you move, and it's gonna paste it right where it needs to be there at the beginning. And then just to make sure, hit your shift and arrow key to line up onto that next notch and paste it again. Now you have a four bar loop turned into an eight bar loop. So that is on track four. Let's move on to track three and show you how to uh, maybe add some hi-hats to that. One thing that you might want to do if you want the hi-hats to be real on time is use the sequencers. If you hit shift in this blue dot thing here on the end of the OP-1, you get a list of sequencers. My favorite sequencer on the OP-1 is the Endless Sequencer, and I made a video about the Endless Sequencer up here if you want to check that out. So we're just going to go over the basics here. I'm going to go ahead and program a quick hi-hat pattern here just by hitting shift and holding that down. Now if I hit play while I'm in this sequencer menu, it'll play the tape. But I want to play the tape and see how the hi-hat sounds. So I'm going to hold the first C key on the keyboard and that will play my sequence uh, in that key. Yeah, that'll work for me. So let's go ahead and turn our metronome off. So I'm going to go back in there turn my red knob all the way down, go back to our tape, make sure we're still on track three, and let's record our hi-hats. But I don't want them to be quite as loud as the drum track, so I'm gonna turn down this red knob here, and that's gonna turn down our recording level. Anything that you wanna record louder or quieter, adjust this orange knob on the tape screen, and you got your input gain. So let's go ahead and turn it down a little bit and see what that sounds like. Yeah, that'll work. So what I'm gonna do now to record the hi-hats now that I've adjusted the volume, I'm gonna hold the record button and hit my hi-hat key that I had already played here in the endless sequencer. If I wanted to play it on a different note, playing on different parts of the keyboard change the pitch of that hi-hat. But for me, I'm just gonna stick with the basic main C I'm going to hold down the record button, and now as soon as I hit this key, it's going to start recording, and I can let go of the record button. And if you hit play after you're done recording, after you've done your loop, it'll just keep playing seamlessly, so you can use that for live looping if you get uh, you know, interested in live looping. 
Okay, so we have the drums recorded. So now one big problem a lot of people have with the OP-1 is its four track limit. Right now we just recorded a simple drum part and we've taken up two tracks. There are a couple different ways to bounce your recordings. And what bouncing is, is taking multiple tracks and turning it into one, freeing up your other tracks. One way that I don't see a lot of people discuss and one of the most easy ways to bounce a track is to make it a sample. In order to do that, you want to go through and go back into your mixer and go back into your drive and make sure that's off. Okay, that's important for this step because this is going to create a sample of exactly how it sounds. And we want to just keep it the dry drums because we're going to add that drive back to the drums in the rest of our track. So go back into your tape and if you hold shift and that orange up button, this will take everything in all four tracks and lift it. If you hit paste, it'll put everything right back on the right tracks and everything. All right, now we're gonna go back and turn our drive back on. I think mine was somewhere up here in the 80s and the release was somewhere in the 20s. And what you can also do once you have it lifted is go into your drum engine and hit that paste. And that paste the entire thing that you just lifted as a sample into the drum sampler. What I just did was use this white knob to create my sample endpoint. And the green knob is how you would control your sample beginning point. That's how you would scrub through the sample. And as you see, as you go through it, the waveform changes and you pick a different point to play. All right, so I'm gonna play the whole thing here. And the red knob, this is how you loop the sample, plays the whole thing, or plays until you let go. The blue knob changes the pitch. But we just wanted to bounce our track so that we could save some space. So I don't want to erase my drums, so I want to go through and create a new loop and just start a fresh loop with one track of this drum. So what I'm going to do is hit play while it's playing, hit shift and my arrow key, and it's gonna jump eight bars ahead. And now I have an empty loop. Now in track three, all I've gotta do is hit record and the key that my drum sample loop was already on. But we wanna adjust our recording level now that we're doing that. So I just lifted it and erased it. I'm gonna record it again. One downside of bouncing like that is you do have a record limit. This one didn't quite get the full eight bars, but that's all right. It was basically the same thing looped over again. So I'm just gonna cut this tail end off, delete it, stop back to go back to the beginning of my loop. If you hit that stop button, that's what that does. And if you hit that lift button again, paste it and paste it. Okay, now we have our drums on one track. So now that we've got our drums figured out, let's go ahead and jump to track one, and maybe we'll create a simple synth line to go with our drums. Let's go into, I've always liked the voltage. This bass line, I've always thought that this is a pretty good sounding default bass for anything. And I'm gonna take the noise level off. Let's go into our tape and play our drums and figure out something simple to play on the bass. So we're just going to record a really simple bass line. Same thing as before, red record button. And as soon as you hit the key, it's going to start recording. Okay, and now that I've got a bass line, what I'm going to do is hop over to track two, go back into our synth here, and we're going to change into this cluster synth here, and we're going to go down to this XYZ files. I don't feel like playing chords, but I'm going to go ahead and do uh, a sequence. So I'm going to go shift the sequencer button down here at the end, and I'm going to choose arpeggio. Okay, there's a lot that this does. I'm not gonna dive into this one too deeply. Just know that one note at a time, 
plays that in an octave, two notes, and it jumps through them. Let's try to just record what it default does in the arpeggiator. Okay, and now that we've got this little arpeggiated, little twinkly doodad, uh, what I would like to do now is add some chords. Now normally what I would do if I wanted to make chords for a track on the OP1 would be go into the synth thing and go find an appropriate sounding synth and make the chords. But one thing that I would like to show you that you could do is hit this mic button and it turns on your line input. So if you have something plugged in or if you don't, you can just use the microphone here. But I've got Logic Pro already running as a line in here and I've got some chords set up and ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is just record these chords directly into the OP-1. Now this one will be a little bit trickier because it doesn't recognize when sound necessarily comes in. So we can't hold the record button and hit the chord and have it start recording. So what I like to do to remedy this is I like to take my tape two notches back and I give myself a two beat count in. So that would be what I'm gonna do now. So it's gonna go. And it's really that easy to record directly into the OP-1. You can plug anything that fits into this one eighth inch jack and uh, it records really well. Now that I've got everything recorded, I'm gonna go through and mix my track. So from the tape, we're gonna hit this four line guy and I've turned all my tracks down. And I'm gonna hit play. I'm gonna slowly bring everything up into what I think sounds nice. So let's start with our drums. Let's just crank it. Okay. Now we got our chords. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty good mix. Now that we've got a good mix, sometimes you're gonna wanna be uh, able to mute tracks and stuff. So if you hit shift and the track that you wanna mute, it mutes tracks. So right now I have all tracks muted and nothing is playing. Shift and the button again and it unmutes the track. And if you wanna solo a track, you just hold that track down. And that's the basics of performing on the OP-1. And then over here on the end here, you've got some performance tricks. Uh, the OP-1 is not strong with performance effects. The only one that I really like using is the tape stop, and that's because that's the only one that keeps your place as the tape is playing. The other ones just stop the tape, basically. And that covers basically everything that you're going to need to know about making music on the OP-1, I think. All right, now I'm going to play it.
All right, folks, that's gonna do it for this quick start guide. There's so much that the OP1 does. There's a whole sampling that I didn't cover with the synth engine at all. I didn't cover LFOs at all. I didn't cover any of the effects. This was not meant to be a cover everything, a masterclass. This was meant to be a quick start guide, the basics of what you need to know to start making music quickly on the OP1. So if you found it helpful, hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. And until next time, thanks for watching. And I'll see you, uh, I'll see you in the next, I'll see you in the next video. Okay. Ooh.